Hello everyone and welcome to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk. Today's topic is product recommendations. My name is Michaela and I'll be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this web conference through Teams live events and the audio can be heard through your device speakers. Today's web conference is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. By participating in this session using Microsoft Teams, your name, email address, phone number, and or title may be viewable by other session participants. If you do not consent to being part of a recorded session, please disconnect at this time. The recording will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. If you have questions for the presenter or need support, please use the Q&A panel located on the right side of your screen. Our presenters will be responding to your questions throughout the event, and we will have some time at the end to speak to some questions verbally. Thank you for your patience during these announcements. Let's get started. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Boris Sokolov, Senior Program Manager. Boris, over to you. Thank you, Michaela. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here, and I'm excited to share with you our latest and greatest innovations in the space of product recommendations, personalization, and rich discovery. Um, I work on the Dynamics 365 Commerce, uh, focused on intelligent recommendations, and I'm joined today with uh, by Benita Bio, who's a fellow teammate, and she will help out with moderating the chat and answering any questions as we progress. And she will join me for the question and answer at the end of the session. So briefly, um, the goal of this session is to get everybody um, comfortable and informed of why are we focusing on AI and ML recommendations? Uh, how will they drive engagement and what is the value overall for uh, customers? What is my, uh, What recommendations has Microsoft built and what are we doing in this space? How does that overall experience and work translate for Dynamics 365 Commerce customers? Any preview features that we are working on and then at the end we'll talk about question and answers. So, why are we uh, focusing um, a large amount of resources and capacity on AI ML recommendations? As we've seen over the last decade or so, there's a significant influx investments by retailers and by uh, organizations in driving rich discovery via recommendations, uh, contextual recommendations, uh, manual editorial collections, a number of solutions, but they've see, we've seen significant um, increase in engagement and conversions from shoppers when they have retailers who have recommendations versus retailers who do not. We also leverage recommendations throughout Microsoft Store experiences, and we see that roughly 50% of all discovery experiences and all conversions go through a recommendation solution of some sort. While a lot of organizations start recommendations and the rediscovery by a fully manual approach because they are the subject matter experts and they understand the customer base best, we know that the solution doesn't scale and it doesn't provide the fast response rate that an automated solution would. By leveraging AI and machine learning models, we are able to provide a set of solutions that enhance the powers of merchandisers and marketers to reach their audience in a very personalized and very engaging way. Machine learning, um, machine learning recommendations are prominent in more and more experiences, and we see retailers adopt them at an unprecedented rate. With that said, what is Microsoft doing in the space? We have very um, prolonged experience in the space. As I mentioned, we've been working this uh, 10 plus years, and we have a very clear um, set of characteristics that we focus on when we build recommendations because it's important that we provide great set of choices for shoppers to, um, to engage with, but they need to be married with a satisfying experience. Satisfying meaning that the shopper gets the content recommended to them at the moment that they're most likely to engage with it. If I was to provide contextual recommendations without context, or if I was to provide personalized recommendations without the customer having identified themselves, that it will create a very jarring experience and therefore it will disrupt the value of recommendations. So recommendations and experience have to be married together. The goals that we focus on and what we believe strongly recommendations should be measured against is how they increase the overall revenue, how do they create um, customer loyalty and customer engagement by increasing the, increasing the repeat visits, and how do we grow the average, average order value, which is to say when customers and shoppers visit the, the retail experience, 
they likely are going to engage with more content and therefore they will, will likely create um, more relevant purchases and buy multiple items together. In line of that, we wanted to share a few examples of how we leverage recommendations um, today in Microsoft on retail experiences. Um, as mentioned before, user, experience, user behavior and user experience is very much important when we think about when and how to show recommendations. We leverage, um, on the left side of the screen, you can see how we leverage personalized recommendations and an aggregate list such as top or most or best sellers uh, that are um, driving discovery and engagement on a very side level for that specific shopper. When we navigate to the middle of the product details page, at that point, the shopper has expressed interest in a specific product. And at the bottom, we show a set of recommendations which are contextual, people also like. So this way, a um, shopper never ends up in a dead end uh, browsing experience. No matter what product they look at, they have um, opportunities to continue their discovery experience until they land on a product that they absolutely want to have, and then they'll add to their cart and continue to purchase. Speaking of cart, once the customer um, lands on the cart experience, they can absolutely be um, shown as what we call frequently bought together set of recommendations, and those aim to be complementary to what is already in the customer's cart. So if the in this particular example, uh, the shopper has added a laptop to their cart, and we see a set of accessories being recommended automatically by the model, a machine learning model, able to pick up all of these um, various orders that have happened in the past, leverage the insight from those, and then tailor them specifically to this product and to this customer. Recommendations do not necessarily need to be used as a single standalone lists. They can be used to power a rich browse experience, such as the one that I'm showing on the screen. The concept here is that we leverage the Microsoft recommendations lists as a building blocks to build an experience that fits the specific retailer and the specific domain in which we're trying to engage customers. For Microsoft Store and Microsoft Surface Store, this means that we will show all the laptops and all the different devices on the right and on the left, there will be a set of controls that will allow for the shopper to go and refine the, the list or add additional information information that they see pertinent and get the right um, set of products that they look forward to. This is all um, by providing guided experience to the customer, to the shopper, which deviates from how search is designed. Our organization is a tightly knit group of engineers and researchers. Uh, we've been very prominent in um, the various forums and industry um, conventions and organizations. <clears throat> we have a number of uh, patents and academic publications. Our goal is to not only um, ship the latest and the greatest, but work with the industry, uh, with partners and with customers on how to um, serve them best and keep innovating and keep uh, moving the industry forward. With all of that said, this spoke a lot about the investment that Microsoft is doing for our own Microsoft's technologies and Microsoft's products. How does that translate for Dynamics 365 Commerce? For the last couple of years, we've been heavily investing in making sure that the recommendations experience that I briefly described is fully integrated inside the Dynamics 365 Commerce experience. Once the license is purchased as an add-on to Dynamics 365 Commerce, Microsoft engineers will engage and handle the backend provisioning and ensure that the models compute the data as appropriate. We serve the results, we leverage all the data that was made available to us, and then finally we'll fine tune the models to work specifically for the customer's domain. Um, a retailer in grocery stores, for example, versus a retailer in fashion versus a retailer in automotive um, have different ways that they handle recommendations, different amounts of data, and we need to leverage those appropriately. Another one uh, example of the integration is the fact that all functionalities that I'll discuss, such as recommendation list modif modifiers, enabling, disabling features, etc., all can be done from HQ. All the controls are in um, the Dynamics 365 Commerce backend, including the feature management, and therefore allows us to enable and disable features at a very granular level. We leverage data in the customer's Azure Data Lake Gen 2. Uh, as many of you are likely familiar, um, Azure Data Lake is a repository that allows for a very scalable and very performant usage of large amounts of data and gathering insights from those. Um, there is a seamless integration of Azure Data, Azure Data Lake Gen 2 in Dynamics 365. 
uh, we have optimized those flows to leverage the recommendations, the data for the recommendations in Azure Data Lake as well. That allows us for two op opportunities. One, we are able to handle large volumes of data at scale, which allows us to produce very meaningful and very relevant recommendations. But also, the Azure Data Lake um, solution will reside in the customer's um, Azure subscription, and therefore, you'll be completely under their control. That means that at any given time, the customer has control over the data that's being shared with recommendations, and can enhance it, or can supplement it, or can bring other sources if necessary to supplement the data that was already provided by Dynamics. So the goal here is to keep giving, uh, keep empowering the customers to have full control over their data. Of course, as any other component in Dynamics 365 Commerce, we support assortment channels, categories, and catalogs out of the box. The recommendations are computed at a broader level just because we want to leverage as much signals as possible. Uh, however, after the compute is done, the models will absolutely factor in uh, all these variables so that we can provide the experience for the, the um, shoppers at exactly what we need and make sure that it's very focused to specific needs that they have. We provide an omni-channel recommendation list. The reason we stress this is omni-channel experience is because we talk a lot about digital commerce and we talk a lot about uh, rich discovery in e-commerce space. However, recommendations can be leveraged in any of the surfaces where Dynamics 365 Commerce is present, um, such as omni-channel or uh, clienteling or call center. On the screen that you see in front of you are the set of lists that are um, are made available to all customers who purchase the license out of the box. Um, they are available to pretty much any version of Dynamics 365 Commerce that we onboard customers. And um, the moment provisioning is complete, all these recommendations, quote unquote, just work. I'm going to dig deeper on all of them to kind of give insights of what each of these mean and how they should be used. The first one to start with is people also like. This is a machine learning list that we use to provide contextual recommendations based on a seed product. That is to say that the recommendations here will aim to say people who like this product also like these other products. People who buy this product buy also these other products. The reason we use like and buy interchangeable is because today we use uh, main signal is transactions. Uh, in the future, we want to continue working with customers and partners and incorporating additional signals. Uh, such as views and click streams or wish list additions uh, or any other component that is very insightful and provides a um, glimpse of the behavior of shoppers. We've seen that this list is a great performer for um, retailers that would like to have a long and continuous um, discovery experience for their uh, shoppers and ensure that the shoppers have the ability to discover a large set swath of products that are very similar to each other. Um, this is all driven by transactions and behavior of the actual shoppers. This is not something that we model or we expect the retailers to take action on. It's all handled by the machine learning logic in the back end. Another machine learning list is the frequently bought together that I've mentioned earlier, and it is great as a complementary solution for a cart experience. It provides great set of recommendations that uh, are basically uh, can be summarized as, did you forget to add this? Did you forget to add that? Um, it's a set of products that are not likely for the customer to have, for the shopper to be aware of and able to discover by themselves. And this is at the moment of checkout, we um, use the opportunity to provide them with products that we think is gonna require very little, very minimal effort to convince them and get added to the cart. So we do not create here a new discovery path for them to go and lo get lost and deviate from the goal, which is checkout but how do we supplement that particular cart experience? This is the main driver for increasing average order value, and we've seen tremendous success, especially when the recommendations that we make are um, accessories or supplementals to the products that are already in the customer's cart. Personalized recommendations. As I mentioned earlier, we focus personalization to mean what is the content that the customer or the shopper will be most likely to engage with. In this context, um, we focus on product discovery and product recommendations. So 
for those, we will leverage um, as many transactions as we may have for this particular user, for whom, excuse me, for this particular shopper, for whom we are making these recommendations. But also, we will leverage all the infrastructure and all the signals that we have from all the various transactions from various customers. All of that information leveraged allows us to build a set of recommendations that are extremely engaging, extremely relevant to that particular shopper. They are also fully GDPR compliant, and we allow at any given time either for the retailer to say disable um, personalized recommendations or a specific consumer shopper to decide to opt out of those. The rest of the customer base will continue getting personalized recommendations, but that particular person's data will no longer be tracked, and therefore we will not provide any personalized recommendations for them. While we have the ability to personalize any recommendations list, we also offer a dedicated picks for you list, which is basically our um, set of recommendations coalesced into a single list of personalized recommendations that effectively says, we know who you are as a customer, as a shopper, here are recommendations that we know we're gonna engage with. Next to the machine learning algorithms, um, we have a set of aggregate lists that basically track the entire set of product assortments or the entire set of transactions to derive insights that are staples in almost any retail experience. And we've discovered that while they seem a little bit of um, simple and straightforward, a lot of um, customers are used to rely on them to drive, to drive discovery via novelty. Basically, what is new since the last time I came to the site or since I came to the store? What has changed? Show me what I've missed. Best selling uh, attempts to capture the highest perf best performers of the retail experience so that this way we can pr provide the uh, shoppers with content that are most popular, um, most purchased, uh, most liked, the highest performing uh, products on the retailer space. Trending is the intersection between new and best selling. It allows us to get the best performing products for a short period of time and sort them from the newest to, um, to the oldest. So this is basically to say if there is a retailer that um, wants to separate what are the products that we call in vogue and they are awesome and amazing and very well performing recently but they don't compare to products that have performed really well two years ago. And this idea is here is to separate what is recently awesome versus what has been awesome uh, since the beginning of the store. With all the examples that I went to uh, went over uh, in the last few minutes, they are all kind of um, very well understood solutions and very well understood scenarios. So a lot of retailers and shoppers very quickly know how to engage with them. And we believe we've exhausted the solutions that the opportunities that recommendations offer us. What we actually think about recommendations is that we think that they are building blocks that should be leveraged with the, throughout the experience in as many creative ways as possible. As I mentioned earlier, we have dedicated machine learning lists, but we also have a rich browsing experience that we can use to create a um, combination of experience that customers always have a way to discover new content. We wanted to share with you a few creative examples of how to leverage these building blocks in the experience for um, to get the creative juices flowing, and we encourage folks to continue experiment and come up with their own ideas. The first example I want to briefly mention is if I take a category, excuse me, I can take a list such as new, but then I apply a specific category on it, shoes. If I apply this category, I'm able to create new in shoes set of recommendations that are basically say, what is new in shoes without necessarily having to be new across the entire retail space. Personalized best setting list with applied category it kind of adds another twist on it, which is I will get the best sellers in a specific category, let's say jewelry, but then I'll personalize it and make sure that the results that are surfaced are most engaging first and least engaging last, specific for each individual shopper. So the personalization of a list does not change the nature of the list itself, but it reorders the items in there with a dedicated weight that is going to be specific for that particular shopper. That is to say that the products in best-selling jewelry for you will still will be the best-selling products in the category jewelry, but they'll be organized in a weighted way that is most engaging for a particular shopper. 
people also like with pre-populated seed product. As I mentioned and iterated a couple of times already, we talk about people also like as a contextual set of recommendations on a details page where a customer has already expressed interest in a product. We know that this is not the only way that we uh, shoppers express interest in a product. They can search for it, uh, they can uh, get a notification, or they can click on a merchandising email or, or any other uh, communication. If for whatever reason, if they end up on a page or end up on a search result or end up on an experience that says, we get what you're looking for, but we don't have a stock out of it or that product is deprecated, for whatever reason, we're not able to act on your um, on the purchase that you want to make. It would be great if we're able to, instead of saying out of stock, out of inventory, deprecated, to say, here's some products that are very much like the one you're looking at. In this particular case, will be, here's some wines that are very much like 2014 Col Soler Cabernet Sauvignon. This way, we want to continue the continuous journey for shoppers so they don't ever feel that they're in a dead end and they didn't find the product they were looking for, shoot the page and go to a different retailer. We want to keep them understanding and discovering the richness of the uh, retailer's catalog. Frequently bought together on a product page was an example that we recently came across uh, working with a specific customer who came across, hey, I'm a fashion retailer. I'm very interested in providing a set of recommendations on the product detail page, but they're not about people who also like other products, but I would like to make complementary recommendations. How can we accomplish this? We discovered in their case, frequently bought together on the product detail page, not with the cart as context, but as the product as a context, was able to provide a set of recommendations that were very complementary for this product. If the shopper is looking at a jacket, for example, frequently bought together will recommend gloves, scars, uh, sweatshirt underneath, or pants that go well with the jacket. And this is all, again, based solely on signals from shoppers' behavior and, uh, and their transactions. This is not something that we have to craft on the back end so that we can accomplish the results that we would like. So, Please experiment, take a look at what we offer and how um, we can continue pushing the needle and moving the needle of how we use these in a creative way to create engaging experiences for the uh, shoppers. With all of that said, um, we had uh, partners and customers concerned that the algorithms may be successful in many scenarios. However, they will be situations where the expertise of an individual, of the subject matter experts at the retailer side, need to retain control so that they are able to correct any missteps or add additional insight that the algorithm just didn't have. For example, a new product that became available that we know is going to be very engaging, is very relevant for for shoppers, but because there's no transactions, it's not going to show up in trending, it's not going to show up in people also like, it's not going to show up in bestseller. So how do we address this? One of the ways we can do this is by creating uh, configurations on the recommendation lists. And the first example I'm showing here is for trending, we are able to control what is the delay, uh, what is the recent period of time that we consider assortments in, and what is the recent period of time that we consider um, transactions in? To give you an example, in an automotive or a, a furniture retailer, uh, transactions happen infrequent and they're all significant. So for those, we would like to say, we would like products that are sorted in the last six months and transactions that has happened in the last year. However, if I am uh, working with a fashion retailer or it, we are serving a um, grocery store, for example, the churn of products and transactions. So what's popular is changes by season or changes by event, um, external factors. So we want to continue to empower retailers to have complete control over how trending behaves in their specific domain. When that is not sufficient, we also offer a set of modifiers that at any given time, retailers can um, override the results returned by the algorithms. As you may notice on the top, uh, on the screenshot that we have on the right, you see new product lists, trend, uh, trending product lists, et cetera, et cetera. And the idea here is that we allow you to modify the results of any list out there. The way the modifiers work is that we are able to say a specific product should never be shown in a list. Um, that is to say, for example, I don't want this product to show in new, but I would like for it to show in frequently bought together. I don't want it to show in trending, but I would like for it to show it in personalized recommendations. So control is very granular. Or we can go with the opposite approach, which is, hey, I know the recommendations are not likely going to pick up this particular product, 
but I would like for it to be in position two for frequently bought together and in position five for best selling product list. Again, the whole goal here is that we correct the algorithm and we provide additional insights um, and we manicure the experience for the shoppers rather than try to do the job instead of the algorithms. There's no limit of how many products we can enter in this modifier range, uh, but maintaining this list can become a challenge. So we encourage folks to use it as a control mechanism rather than as a replacement of the recommendation solution. As mentioned earlier, um, recommendations is an omni-channel experience, and we want to showcase that recommendations come out of the box in the point, sa point of sale experience as well. Uh, we work really hard to make sure that all the solutions that used to leverage recommendations prior um, um, in the earliest releases of Dynamics 365 Commerce um, continue to work exactly the way as before. It just leveraged a new set of solutions to be provided. So on the product details screen, we see recommended products on the right, and this is the same um, algorithm as people also like. So this provides great contextual recommendations for a sales associate to tell a customer who's expressed interest in this particular blazer, for example, say, I get it that you like, let me show you what else you may actually find interesting based on what others have done in our uh, store. Uh, frequently bought together is present on the transaction screen right underneath the um, cart. So this way the sales associate can make recommendations as the customer is checking out of like, oh, did you think about getting these accessories? Did you think about getting this warranty? Did you think about extending the, um, your order to incorporate these products that we absolutely think are going to be great to enhance the experience that you're getting from the products you already have in the cart? And of course, on the customer details screen, we offer recommended products, which is powered by the personalized set of recommendations picks for you. And here the idea is that in any given time, the sales associate will be able to recognize the, uh, the shopper, navigate to their profile, and then set of, provide set of recommendations that are just relevant and engaging for that particular shopper, uh, whatever they are in their customer journey. So, I spoke a lot about how amazing recommendations we can compute and how relevant and engaging they are for um, shoppers. All of this is possible because recommendations leverages tremendous amount of data from the retailer. As you can see here, we mentioned people also buy leverages transactions, frequently bought together leverages orders, picks for you transactions again, new assorted date field, and so on and so on. So we want to stress recommendations is only as powerful as the data that we feed it. So better data drives better recommendations. Data, data, data is key. And the good news is that the recommendation solution coming the relying on Azure Data Lake doesn't necessarily have to have the data all to be existing in Dynamics 65 Commerce. We can absolutely use historical data. We can use legacy data. We can use any kind of signals that we believe are relevant to feed directly into Azure Data Lake Gen 2. And then recommendations will pick those up independently and serve recommendations based on those signals. So data, data, data. It's a kind of a mantra in our organization. When onboarding recommendations, and we've been doing this for the last couple of years with a number of customers and partners, we've discovered that there are certain challenges in the overall ecosystem uh, that may disrupt the onboarding experience. And we would like to make sure that partners and customers are aware of them as they onboard experience and can factor in those challenges um, as part of the onboarding process. The first one to mention is while Azure Data Lake Gen 2, ADLS for short, um, is fully integrated in Dynamics 365 and we fully support it, it was integration uh, that was done just a year or a year and a half ago. And it's still relevant to remember that this is a new technology, especially when it comes to integration. So there are some challenges that we want to make sure we work through of how do we set up the appropriate Gen Lake, what are the policies around it, how does data flow through it, everything works on a schedule, and um, make sure the logistics are properly set up. Similarly, uh, UX customizations are often required um, for creating an experience that shoppers will engage with. So content itself, as relevant as it may be, um, as mentioned, it has to be tied with an experience that resonates with shoppers. Um, a lot of partners and customers we work with uh, often put that to the very end, and sometimes they're surprised or uh, have challenges processing how much there is to do to make sure that the recommendations are as engaging as they can be. 
So we just strongly recommend that we think about UX and customizations of the UX early on the project rather than put it towards the end. And last, uh, migration from Internet as a Service to Service Fabric is an unrelated effort across Dynamics 365. However, given the Dynamics 365 commerce and recommendations um, live in kind of a quote unquote separate worlds and separate infrastructures, uh, the fact that the environment may be moved from IAS to a, a Service Fabric may create some confusion in terms of granting recommendations access. Uh, this is just something we've discovered um, with a number of customers, and we wanted to make sure that folks are aware that as we onboard, there's some backend logistics that we should be um, very eager to address as quickly as we can to make sure that once we get to the validation and signing off and we're looking at all the fruits of our labors, we do not get uh, roadblocked by some infrastructure challenges. So. Everything I mentioned so far is something that works out of the box. Um, we can tomorrow or right after the session uh, purchase a license on board recommendations and start leveraging those functionalities without any um, additional um, challenges or any additional support required from Microsoft. However, we do not stop here. We continue innovating and it is our passion to bring new solutions and bring new uh, experiences to our customers and our shared uh, consumers. So as such, we've invested in a couple of new technologies that I would like to briefly mention to you and then showcase as examples um, later in the presentation. We have two projects that are in public preview. I'll start with Shop Similar Looks. Shop Similar Looks is an innovative and um, there is a unique algorithm uh, machine learning, AI machine learning algorithm that leverages solely the product metadata, specifically the product images. When I say product images, a lot of folks ask, do we need to enhance it with the metadata? Do we need to put tags? Do we need to curate them in any way? And as fact, the fact is, as long as we source the images that are going to be used in the product catalog to showcase the products to consumers, those set of images are already relevant um, and they describe the product very well for us. There's no additional metadata that's necessary. The algorithm scans and um, bases the recommendations solely on the images. So how does it work? The algorithm is able to sort out in an image what is the product and what is everything else. Um, doesn't matter if a model is wearing uh, the, the item, such as in jewelry or in fashion, or it's posed on a, a different surface, or is different lighting, or it's uh, from a different angle. Given the set of product images for a specific product, the algorithm is able to identify it. And then the magic becomes when he's able to identify two products and discover similarities between them. I recommend these two products are visually similar. Um, in retailers such as fashion, that is a kind of a no brainer and we understand naturally how that works. We've discovered that this is very powerful in other um, areas where visual cues are important, such as jewelry or um, groceries and anywhere where customers and shoppers um, peruse the catalog or discover content very visually. The second algorithm that I want to briefly talk to you to, um, about today is Shop Similar Description. While we have a similar name, they're based on a very different technology the back end. We have an algorithm that is able to pick up the name and description of all products and find similarities inside those descriptions and therefore say these two products are similar. The magic comes from the fact that it leveraged, pardon me, it leverages solutions that is able to do natural language, natural language processing of the description and of the product name, and then effectively find similarities that are not something that us as humans can absolutely understand. It will require subject matter expertise. More about this uh, as I walk through the examples. So without further ado, I wanted to show you Shop Similar Looks in Action as part of the Cloud for Retail announcement. So I'm going to play a snippet of that video, but I strongly encourage everyone to check out Cloud for Retail and uh, all the materials that we've shared with them uh, as part of that announcement. Microsoft Cloud for Retail uses real-time data and AI to uniquely make intelligent recommendations based on both user behavior and real-time interactions with the store, ensuring the most relevant personalized shopping experience. Intelligent recommendations can do even more, suggesting other products that look similar to the A-Line gradient gown. With a unique AI capability to shop similar looks without metadata, you can unlock sales opportunities and delight your customer with the skill of a personal shopper. Personal is... Okay, 
so this was just briefly to give an overview of what shop similar looks um, feels like when um, in front of sh uh, shoppers um, I strongly encourage you to check out the materials we've released uh, our documentation is all available but also please join us at the various forums such as Yammer groups and um, other opportunities you contacts you have in Microsoft reach out to us let us know we're happy to showcase this off with um, customer specific data and talk about how they can drive engagement and discovery with this solution uh, our goal is to get shop similar looks in a uh, ga state uh, by uh, fall this year by uh, end of 2021 so switching to shop similar description i wanted to showcase a couple of examples uh, from customers cheetah design and san michelle wine estates both of those customers have given their explicit permission to use their data and showcase their experiences in such forums. Uh, I want to guarantee that we will never, um, as an organization, we will never share any customer data without their explicit permission in any form. Customers own their data um, and we will absolutely respect that. So Chita Design is a Australia-based retailer that is focusing on home furniture and um, um, fashion accessories. Um, they are great in creating very visual um, and, and engaging content uh, to showcase their products, but they also have very rich and amazing product descriptions. When it comes to product descriptions, we discover that they um, created content that is very engaging for shoppers as they consume it and they navigate the site. But our algorithm is able to find key information from both the name and the um, particular uh, the product description to find insights and find similarities and recommend a set of products that are very similar to it. The magic comes from the fact that, as you can notice in this particular example, it never mentions that Boris the Badger is a plush or is a toy or uh, it's an animal. It has things that we as humans, once we consume this, can insinuate and understand. But for algorithms, that is very difficult to determine. Our algorithm, uh, shop similar description, is very uh, well poised to understand what this description is about and find products who aim to accomplish the same goal with their descriptions. And in this particular case is recommending three plush toys that none of them have the word, um, excuse me, none of them plush or toy in the description either. And it focuses on animal, same as the hedgehog, even though again, the word animal is not present. So this is where the algorithm is able to build similarities and build relevance in a way that um, we would need otherwise uh, to scale a group of experts that are able to populate all of this data manually and keep it up to date it just doesn't scale and the algorithm can do this in any language in any context and it can do that absolutely at scale another example from cheetah design is uh, they uh, they love for cards and for handcrafted content uh, such as the one you see here and again the description is aiming to capture an intent and capture an idea that uh, humans will, uh, reading the description will, uh, will resonate with. The algorithm is able to pick up that idea and then work with it to provide a set of recommendations that will be just share, it will be sharing the same emotional context and shame, um, same engagement um, goals as the original product. So this is to iterate that as long as the language allows us to have the enough data, the algorithm can pick up similarities regardless of how product is described exactly and is able to pick up on what is the intent behind the description and surface that in the recommendation. The follow up example I wanted to share with everybody is uh, from uh, Wine Saint Michel Wine Estate and uh, their wine retailer here in the state of Washington, in the United States, and they are. Um, they have a number of brands, uh, I believe 30 plus brands of wineries across the state and across the country. Um, a lot of their um, discovery experiences is based on what is inside a wine. What is that that we believe is the most representative of that particular wine? So they have a number of experts that their entire job is to focus on what is this wine? Why is it good? What is it? Uh, that is going to resonate with uh, shoppers and what is it that is specific about this wine that the shopper should be aware of. Our algorithm shop some description is able to pick up on that set of information and that set of insights and identify them in other um, products and again provide similarities. 
the magic here specifically happens when we start talking about how do you represent certain aspects of wine in a way that I not necessarily, not necessarily understand, but uh, experts do. For example, is the difference between acidic and dry, or in this particular case, uh, case uh, citrus and grapefruit, water, uh, melon, watermelon and strawberry. So these combinations, we've highlighted them here so that they're easy to understand, but this is not something that the algorithm re requires. It's not because there are specific words and we've found the occurrence of those words and therefore provided recommendations, but it's consistent. It's um, analyzing the description as a whole or the product name as a whole and providing relevant recommendations, even if the um, shopper themselves do not necessarily understand the description because it's full of terminology uh, for wine connoisseurs. So before we open up to question and answers, I wanted to briefly mention that um, provision of recommendations is a um, undertaking that we know um, takes a lot of folks. Um, it, it gives them pause, makes them pause of thinking, okay, for me to go and take a look at recommendations, understand how they work in my ecosystem, in my environment, I will need to go and invest in provisioning recommendations, setting up the data flows, computing recommendations, and seeing the results in action. That can take time, and time is money. So for that, we have absolutely invested in a so solution which we call mock recommendations, and the word mock there is key, is that this is not a set of recommendations that should be used in production or for actual shoppers or to power an experience. Uh, there's a significant lim inherent limitations such as data being static, uh, the solution completely manually being powered, and the fact that um, it cannot serve a um, number of different scenarios. It focuses on the core scenarios that we discussed so far. So because of that, we strongly encourage folks to try it out as a mechanism to showcase recommendations and discover how they align with the overall experience, um, what, um, what solutions exactly we offer and how they translate for that particular retailer. Uh, but not for production scenarios. So this is just to try it out and see how it works. Again, I strongly encourage folks to reach out to our um, Microsoft contacts or to the Yammer group and work with us to figure out how we can set this up for them and see how they can see recommendations in action before they go to the next step of provisioning recommendations. Um, while this talk and many others like it are available to you to kind of get understanding and get comfortable with the product recommendation solutions, we have a rich set of documentation, which I absolutely encourage you to go check out. Um, it has an overview of recommendations that I spoke of. It talks about how to enable recommendations, how to set up ADLS, uh, and many more subjects that we strongly encourage you to go check out. So at that point, I would like to open it for questions. Um, maybe there were some questions already in, uh, in the chat and I would look forward to Benita to help uh, navigate the space. Uh, we'll wait a few minutes or so to see if anybody has any last minute questions um, and then we'll move forward. Okay. Should we go ahead? Let's go ahead. All right, with that, I'll hand it back to Boris. Okay, so thank you everyone for joining, um, listening to our session. I again encourage folks if um, there's any follow-up questions or any particular specifics that are interest to our product or to the context of how to leverage our product in your dedicated business, please absolutely feel free to reach out to us. And we also encourage you to check out the additional resources. Uh, we've put the, a number of talks that talk about commerce overall. Um, and um, in this slide, I kind of wanted to iterate the content that we already produced and I strongly encourage you to go check it out. And of course, you can always reach out to us in the various forums that we have, such as the Yammer group or um, the forums that we've made available. 
Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate your time, and I look forward to connecting with you again. We would like to get your feedback on today's session. I have posted a link to a short survey in the Q&A panel. We value your feedback and welcome your input on how we did today and what you would like to see in future sessions. The survey scores are on a scale from one to five, with five being the highest score possible. Thank you for your participation. As a reminder, the recording of today's session will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. I'd like to expend a huge thank you to our presenter and to our audience for logging in and joining us today. Please stay safe and have a great rest of your day or evening wherever you are.